Hello again. We're really happy to have you with us now and hope that you've been with us before. My name is Swami, otherwise known as Bruce P. Grether. And I'm Nimbos. Otherwise known as Nimbos. And we are going through the nine realities of stardust one by one. We decided to do this right and just go ahead and and uh, you know do it so reality number two there is an introduction in this book that gives background and kind of leads you into it and then very briefly the book goes through each of the of the nine realities reality number two is at every moment I leap into the abyss of the unknown closer there's the glyph move it down there you go Okay, here's the glyph. Yep. And, uh, all right, and then I think I'm being called on to read the first three paragraphs, which are very short, kids. Don't don't be alarmed. Uh, <laughs> okay. Reality number two: At every moment, I leap into the abyss of the unknown. Tremendous power emerges from within you when you face your fear and embrace uncertainty as something inevitable, yet not necessarily disastrous, instead possibly an actual advantage. We humans tend to seek security, consistency, and to develop strong patterns of habitual behavior for reassurance we easily slip into the assumption that whatever we expect, whatever we like or dislike will persist and continue to be present in our existence. The truth is that we never know for sure from one moment to the next what will happen. The end of the reading. I can certainly, having lived 13.8 billion years, vouch that that is definitely the case. You don't <laughs> have a clue what's going to happen in the next nanosecond. So that's right. Anyway, right. That's right. But you know, the the thing about this whole uh, nine is that these are also organized according to stages of human development. This is not just made up by me. And well, the, it's, it's all. The first all. reality that we already talked about, I am the source, actually also relates to infancy. I am the source. I am born of my mother's womb. I, 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 I am the source of my own experience because it's all happening in my nervous system. The second reality is that as you are there, uh, you begin to discover that you never know for sure what's going to happen. You may be reassured and cuddled and taken care of, or suddenly you might be left alone and you wonder where is somebody and you'll start crying. This is what infants often do. They, they start to discover that, that, that it seems like they can control things sometimes by crying. Uh, it doesn't always work. And, and so this, this second reality of stardust it comes with when you begin to move yourself around and you begin to check out your environment and as you begin to crawl as a small infant and then it kind of goes through the toddler stage when you're able to to move yourself to different places but you never know what's going to happen and this is sort of the the second lesson we learn uh, is mobility and territoriality based on where we are so um, expect the unexpected. I'm on page 74. Yeah. See, some people have control issues. Well, and yeah. They want to control how things are going to develop. Exactly. And, and does that work? You can't do it. No. Okay. It doesn't work. You just it doesn't work. Just have to. Some people say it sounds trite. Go with the flow. Right, that the right. we call it flow of evolution, or but in any event, the bottom line is expect the unexpected. 
because, I, you know, but with a positive mental attitude, which basically I think is what uh, in the old days they called hope. Mm -hmm. I, I, mm -hmm. I went through a phase of saying hope is a hype, it's a bunch of baloney. Wow. But I think it's necessary to live, uh, again, a sane, productive life. You, you got to have a, things are going to turn out. You really, you don't have control. Ride the wave. It's like surfing. I agree, Maybe. but I think that that's really in the present in a way, because you can also make a case for the fact that hope is kind of uh, looking toward a future that may or may not happen. You know, I, Correct. I think, well, it's I think, an attitude that I think it's going to be, to be okay. Yeah, to, to be, be hopeful okay. that things yeah. are going to be okay is a really important, helpful thing. I was just uh, happening to look, because you were reading from page 74, Expect the Unexpected. This is a good, this is the end of the page. This is a good time to clean your perceptual filters of old accumulated habits and beliefs that no longer serve you. Well, we have to do that every single day of our lives. Every moment of our day. Expectation is a narrow focus that almost always leads to disappointment. Plus, anticipation can blind you to alternatives that may turn out better than what you expected. Trust your ability to improvise with whatever happens. Gosh, I'm smarter that's, than I thought uh, I was. That's how we. That's <laughs> how we have survived since yeah. we uh, came down from the trees in the beautiful savanna, which uh, I think they, that was the Garden of Eden. But that's another story. We're well, not that is going another there. story in it, but it's a good story, and and maybe it's how we survived since uh, since you know these. The star seed that was drifting through the universe came plunging down into our atmosphere and triggered the development of life on Earth. We don't know how life started on our planet for sure. We may never really solve that. I mean, people again, people have beliefs, and and I try to respect the fact that if people are attached to their beliefs, you don't want to jerk them away from them and leave no, them without that. No, that, absolutely not. That's that's no. unkind. No, but at the same time. Uh, you know, there's a possibility that the, that life was star seeded through the universe, and that every time it lands on a planet that has promising conditions, it gradually builds up a biosphere. Or there's alternative versions where certain things were happening physically in the early Earth environment, and they actually began to create amino acids. That's also very plausible. We just don't know. But I, it looks to me like life uh first of all is very common in the universe probably ever. yes i agree also and that given the proper conditions which aren't that unusual life will develop and right. furthermore that water water is the prime ingredient i i have a tendency right. to venerate water oh yeah almost in a religious sure. sense sure. because it is water that pipeline not to get mm -hmm. political mm -hmm. that business with the first nations and the pipeline being shoved through their land mm -hmm. and poisoning their water right that saying i learned from them through the media not mm -hmm. personally mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ni -wikoni. Water is life. That is a profound statement. They may not have, sure. you know, water is life. Well, anyway, it, I don't know why I'm talking about water. No, but that anyway. reminds, that yeah. reminds me of, of uh, Heinlein's great novel, Stranger in a Strange Land, about the, the human boy who was raised by the Martians, and he comes oh, to Oh, yes, and, I grok your fullness. I grok you in fullness, and he, he baptizes people in water uh, just by... Uh, getting them to jump in the pool with him and, and they become water brothers, whoever they are. Um, that sounds familiar. It makes total sense, but, but, uh, <clears throat> to, I mean, to kind that of would return... be familiar to very traditional Western people. We're not going to go in sure, there but... right now. But yeah. Well, and to kind of return to, um, at every moment I leap into the abyss of the unknown, uh, the, the, culmination of that what page again, you want page 76 oh. the the end of that is very Taoist you love Taoism as I do um, it says the only true certainty is uncertainty Wu Wei uh, 
Who, who wait? Parse the chat. Act without speech. doing anything. I don't know if that's strictly relevant, but I love that Of saying. course it is. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, my mother yeah, from Ross Common would say, patience is a virtue. Well, then she starts swinging or get the, made yeah. the switch down. Yeah, yeah, but patience is a virtue. <laughs> to me, it's a, one of the chief virtues, patience. Yeah. Just, well, it's a necessity too, isn't it? It's like a... Yeah, oh, yes, it's a necessity for survival. Like water. Yes, you water know. and patience. There you go, kids. That's your lesson for today. Water and patience. Does that make sense? It does. I always have to ask, if I, it's like a reality check. Is this room round or square? You know, but um, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. of course, that could bring up the idea that I, I came across many times in the last few decades that that uh, square rooms actually trap energy because they have these right angled corners, and that that round rooms like a like inside a teepee or a, a yurt or a, or a geodesic dome uh, they have a different energy because the energy circulates and it circles around and around, but. I don't really see that as necessarily good and bad. Maybe there is some virtue to having a cube around you, you know? I you and I are both basically in because cubes. Because we right? all, most of us live in square rooms. We so. do, we do. Yeah. But, but, but is it necessarily the best thing for us? I don't know. Would, what how, we've this, got. This sounds really funny. This will be over the top, but what would it be like? What would the world look like if we all lived in round rooms, or most of us lived in round rooms? Would I think we'd be different. I do, we'd too. Different. We'd I do be too. different people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we might not like living in a square room, but we're so, you know. <laughs> anyway. We're pretty well domesticated to that, though, aren't we? We're oh, yes. We're that, domesticated I'm certain friends. I admit to being domesticated. Yeah. I want to be feral, but, uh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's nice to think we maybe we're feral, but I think it's not so plausible. No. So anyway, um, I think we've probably covered that one pretty well. That it's uh, I think that reality number two is kind of about the fact that we never know what's going to happen, and it's really helpful to accept that and embrace that. And it's not Expect a threat. Expect the unexpected. It's not a threat, and I'll tell you the reason it's not a threat to us necessarily is because. Most of the time, it's not a disaster. Most of the time, we're not falling off the edge of the world. Most yes. of the time, we are okay. You know, it's yes. Anyway, yeah. okay. It's well, a good tactical doctrine, but anyway, I think so. So anyway, let's let's smile at the children and say, "May all beings find peace."